right. In the first hour of our show today, I was commenting on the fact that this is the time of school prize giving sessions and two weeks time NCA exams will start uh, it, the school year and the compulsory schooling at least for secondary is, is starting to wind down already and it's remarkable actually it's, it's the second of November today and god you know it'll be over soon uh, amazing uh, a, a very disruptive year I have to be said uh, we've had three years of COVID which disrupted New Zealand secondary schooling and New Zealand primary schooling uh, but this year was dominated certainly for the first uh, third of the year by a large number of teacher strikes I counted up, for example, the number of days that my year 12 daughter lost from formal education this year, and it was 11, either due to teacher-only days uh, or due to teacher strikes. Um, now, the irony of that, actually, was, um, as I told you, she went to the prize giving last night, etc. But as we know, um, oh, no, I'll introduce Elwyn now so I can bring him in on the conversation. Elwyn, uh, Paul, welcome to the show. Lovely to have you on. Good morning, Michael. How are you? Or well, afternoon, now. Yeah? Yes, afternoon, sorry. Um, now, <laughs> the reason I asked you to come on the show this afternoon was to provide some expert commentary around uh, something. Uh, what I did was I relayed the fact that my daughter, who is trying to pad her CV for tertiary uh -huh. education, uh, does some community work, and her community work is teaching, well, acting as a sort of a teacher aid for younger children in her school. And she has yep. noticed that a number of them in a decile 10 state secondary school, Elwyn, can barely read or write. And that her the English teachers who are responsible for overseeing her um, activities with these kids have said, yes, it's a problem that they've noticed has got worse uh, in their time in teaching and is really bad now, the worst it's ever been. And have, public, well, certainly privately bemoaned the fact that primary schools aren't doing their job and now they're expected to somehow redress six to eight years of miseducation. So that's yep. the background to this particular issue. And I was, uh -huh. we were t talking about why would that be? Um, what, is, it, is it due to lack of teacher quality? Is it due to parents who aren't discharging their responsibilities either? Is it due to the proliferation of technology from anything from iPads and cell phones and schools? Um, is it due to COVID disrupting learning and yet we've still got the social progression, kids being pushed ahead? And that was the other thing that was being noted too. They were also starting to note in her school, but also the Sydney Morning Herald, you've probably seen that, did a rather large review on it either last week or the week beforehand, that they are now having significant discipline problems in schools at the moment and they are the worst they've ever been as well and they seem to have got worse. Your perspective of this? Well, I, I mean, I, of course, the answer to your, to your range of questions is all of the above. Um, so you need to go back to, um, you know, what, what, what is the root cause? What is the most uh, significant? And I, I have to say it's parenting. Uh, and that's not to let the schools off at all, because when there is inadequate parenting or when children are coming to school without the foundations that they would... Um, normally expect to have, then um, in that situation, the schools have to make up the gap. That's what they exist for. Um, yeah, and I mean, I was visiting a school earlier this year and um, the teacher sort of pointed to uh, one of the girls and said, look, the, the, her year group is the only group that's had a full academic year in the last four years. And, you know, that, that's kind of stunning too. Um, and I think what you reflect on with regards to your daughter having missed at least 11 days of school because of uh, the actions of, of staff, whether it's striking or teacher-only days or all sorts of things like that, I think we've lost this idea that we value every day. Uh, Jonathan, yeah, I think you are. Are you in a, in a, in a rather I'm large just, auditorium? I'm just a lady just walked past me. I'm just shifting now. Oh, okay. All right. No, it's just, <laughs> yes, it sounded sorry. like you're in a very large auditorium. Um, yep. That's all right? Better now. That's cool. Much better. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's okay. Just go back to this parent stuff. Uh, one of the th things I noticed is that for all the aspersions that I might cast against teachers and the teaching profession and the curriculum, et cetera, for getting my yep. child to year seven or eight without being able to read or write, I think as a parent, <laughs> if I was a responsible parent, I would have noticed by now, wouldn't I? Yeah, and, and I, I agree with that. And I mean, one of the things that certainly I, and, and I'm not only myself, I think Nathan Wallace 
um, is a very strong advocate for this kind of thing. Um, but to me, what I said that we need at this stage of, I guess, our history really, is a, a, a genuine crown entity for parenting. Um, because mm. if it wasn't art, then the art has been lost. Um, and in some cases, you know, so significantly lost. I mean, it's, it's, it is worth talking about, you know, two-year-olds that are getting killed and, and things like that because, uh, you know, that's the extreme end of it. Um, but we've also got just some very basic neglect. We've got situations where, um, I don't know, I walked into a bookshop one day and was just looking at books on reading and, you know, there was one there that was sort of 450 pages long trying to encourage parents to read. Well, the parent who was going to read that book already would be doing that. Yes. So yes. we need a whole lot of stuff that's really highly tailored to, hey, you know what, you've got a human being. I mean, I, I, I don't believe that we should say, you know, I, 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 we're having a baby. You're having a human being. <laughs> they're, not, they're not just going to be around for the first few months. And, and this is how we must treat a human being for them to grow up well. You know, even people who grow up well can still make mistakes and still get things wrong at times. But, but they've got better odds if they're well looked after. Um, and I, that, I think that conversation in our society um, has been missing now for a number of years. And it's the key conversation. And so when people say to me, you know, we used to have a world-class education system and now we don't, I, I absolutely think one of the key alignments we've lost is the alignment between good parenting and a quality education system. Well, and let's just go on that, for example. Uh, you talked about Baby Roo, for example, and you see, you're right, that's yes. extreme end. I mean, these people are ferals and they've always been feral and they always will be. So let's not... Uh, and it's to tragedy and yes, we need to do something about it. But I'm talking about kids that are coming into a decile yep. 10 school who've been through a yes. decile 10 primary school. So in actual fact, they've got parents who have got money and presumably uh -huh. they've got an understanding of education who are responsible members of the community. And we're talking large numbers of those kids coming into our school, barely numerate yeah. and literate. Um, is, so is, is, is that a parenting is, is, problem, you're saying? Yes, I think, it, it, I think it can be. I mean, do the parents have, have time? Do they give time? Are they active <laughs> with their kids? Um, are they sitting on the couch and reading to them every night? And if they turn around and say, well, no, I haven't got time to do that, um, we'll say, well, you know, then then it's it's not going to go as well for your child as it could be. Uh, parents, um, because is, well, that you're talking about an age group of parents. It's not my age group, can I say? I'm sixty plus. Uh, I, it's not my age group. Uh, you're talking about the age group of parents who are now what in their thirties and forties. They're pretty yep. wedded to technology themselves. In fact, most of them have a, a cell phone that's attached to them as a body part rather than a, as a, a, an addendum. Um, is it? because they can't drag themselves away from technology and then they're therefore neglecting their children as a consequence? I, I, I think there will be some of that. Um, I, I've also had lots of experience having discussions with parents who are, uh, after the fact, almost, trying to do the right thing. So, for instance, they might have a 14-year-old or 15-year-old who they suddenly realise is, is, as you say, the phone's basically attached to their hand, um, and they're trying to say to their 14 or 15 year old, uh, the phone's going on top of the fridge at 7.30 at night, yeah. and then this will happen and that happen, or we're going to have dinner together, remember yeah. that? Yeah. Um, and the, the kid goes nuts, and uh, you know, a kid can sustain that for a good couple of weeks, uh, and, and the parents get beside themselves, and I think sometimes in the end they give up, um, so that conversation's got to come back further uh, to say, you know, this is, this, in this day and age, this is how we help ensure that a child grows up well, able to read, able to communicate face-to-face -face with another human being. Um, and, and one of the things that is, I think, very powerfully being lost in our schooling system, and I, I worry about how many kids are, not, not so much your child's situation because she's still in a school, but how many kids are going you know what, I, I, I'm still getting my NCEA level, level two this year, but I'm also out there working to put aside some money. And so they're getting a really basic NCEA level two, not mastering anything, and um, they're cutting themselves short for their, for their future qualifications. 